Hi, welcome to episode 140 of the Cat Lady Podcast. My name is Andrea, also known as the Cat Lady. That's two T's, C-A-T-T, which stands for Craft All the Things. Thank you for joining me and welcome. If you're new, this is a primarily knitting, spinning, fiber channel. Um, I do knitting, crochet, spinning, and sometimes I delve into other random strange projects. I have some hand crank knitting machines that I've been pulling out again, so I'll be sharing some of that, but mainly fiber, fiber arts. So welcome, and if you are returning, thank you so much for always coming back and checking me out. It's been a while, again, I don't mean to do this, but it just seems to happen. Life's gotten super busy, and I was like, I need to record, I need to record, I need to record, and all of a sudden it's a month later, and here we are. So again, thank you for joining me. It is September 20th, 2021. I usually don't say the date, but I mean to, so but I wrote it down this time because it's literally exactly one month since I recorded. So uh, you can find me on Instagram as the cat lady. I have a Facebook group as well. I also have a discord server that I haven't mentioned in a couple episodes. So if you are interested in chatting with me and a bunch of fibery friends, then please, the link is below, go to the discord uh, server thing. It's, it's not complicated. I don't still like know how to do everything, but I have a really awesome, moderator that takes care of all that stuff for me uh, and there's a bunch of different channels that you can chat in about crafts, general, um, pets, uh, hot topic discussions, news, whatever. So it is a lot of fun and I respond pretty regularly so come join us. I also have a coffee account that I haven't mentioned in probably forever either and it's just sitting there with with money in it, I'm using gonna use it for some sort of a giveaway or knit along. I have plans, but I I just want to make sure I have enough to do something good. So I, all the money that I've gotten so far is just kind of hanging out. So I have not spent it on anything, and it's not going to be spent on anything. Um, it's not it's not much right now, but and it doesn't need to be much in general. So as soon as I reach a goal, I guess, or if I just decide finally to do some kind of knit along, I will use that. But Basically, coffee just, uh, you buy me a coffee, so you can put a dollar in there and it will support the podcast. So that is all the office work, I guess. So I will jump right into it. Uh, so I will, today I'm going to talk about a bunch of finished objects that I have, uh, lots of knitting and crochet, and then I had a weekend getaway in Yellow Springs for wool gathering this past weekend, so I'll be talking about that. So I have a little bit of stash to share. Not as much, oh, and I forgot something. Ah, okay, well. I will try to run and get that. Uh, not as much stash as I thought I would come home with, really, but uh, I just, that was more there for the camaraderie and friendship, so. Um, so let's move right along. So last that you had, I had shown, I was still working on this, and I just, I, it was, it's a fun project, but it requires a lot of mental like, focus, so I was having a hard time, but I finally just like plugged through it and got it. But this is the Twilight Time headscarf by the marvelous Mrs. Maker. Everything I talk about, I will put a link down below, or I'll list it down below. If you need me to send you a direct link, I can do that, but it's a lot of work to put in a bunch of links, so I usually just write it down so you can copy it and paste it into a browser and it'll come up. Uh, so this is the Twilight Time headscarf, and it is a kind of a, I guess, retro vintage style head wrap. I'll try to put a picture of me wearing it. It's, it's really pretty diamond motif that is Again, the pattern was super well written. It just it required it had a kind of a large repeat and required a lot of focus. So, the yarn is Miss Babs in the Rhinebeck 2019 colorway uh, is the main color, and then the edging is Knit Picks Hawthorne in Williamette. So I was happy to get that done. And another f finished. I don't know if I even. Uh, if you've been following me for a, for a while, you knew this was coming, I think, because I think I mentioned it, but I don't think I showed it started yet. But this is a crocheted baby blanket. I won't open the whole thing, but no pattern, just uh, I took, I had made one for a co-worker, my husband's co-worker, and this is for my husband's cousin, uh, who's having her second baby. So it's a, pretty much the same thing. I just double crocheted, starting, I think I did like 60 stitches across. And just went until I ran out of yarn, and it is the Lion Brand. I think it was Lion Brand. I want to make a blankie, so it was this big, big old cake of yarn that it just looked fun. And to be honest, it wasn't great because it had like a million knots in it. So it's like, why bother? <laughs> I mean, why bother? 
if there's going to be like a bunch of ends in there, I mean, I might as well just buy separate skeins of yarn, right? So, but whatever, it was on sale at the local grocery store. So, uh, so yeah, it's nice and soft. It's just that blanket yarn, super quick. So she is off, he works with her as well. So she is off work right now. So we're just kind of hanging on to it until I still have to wash it until we see them. So next up on the finished objects, and this was made on the Addy Express King size and the Addy Express Pro Professional, whatever, it's the smaller one. And if you've been following me since last year, you've saw I cranked out a bunch of these last year, but this is the first Halloween themed wreath. So this is my Halloween wreath. So what it is, it's a wreath form on the inside that I got from the Dollar Tree. And yeah, I kind of buy them in bulk when I go in there. I'll buy like five or six at a time so that I can make a bunch of wreaths. So I'm, yeah, I might sell these. I might list a few of these as I crank them out. Uh, I was thinking this might need, I don't know, if somehow I wanted to embellish it. I don't know if I like it simple or if I want to like stick a little ghost out of the side or something that says boo or something, I don't know. But the wreath part is cranked on the large machine and then you crank a bow and uh, uh, like sew it together on the small machine. And this was the first time I made a long bow. So usually I made the smaller bows and I had they hang from the bottom. This one was the longer bow that you kind of hang across the top, which I think looks fun. So that is my uh, King Sai or my knitting machine project. And then what else do we got? Next up, well, I guess since we're talking knitting machine, I've been like obsessed with these pumpkins. So, so it's again, this is on the King Size. Why do I always get phone calls? Or a text message. Um, this is on the king size as well, a king size Addy as well, which you wouldn't think because it's kind of a small, cute pumpkin. But you crank out about 50 rows, and then you don't have an example, but you fold it in half on itself. So if you're familiar with how you make a beanie, like a hat on the machine, you crank a bunch of rows and then you fold it in half together and tie it off at the top, and it looks like a little hat, right? So for this, you do the same thing, and then you start wrapping around the yarn to make the little wedges, but then you whip stitch or, or you kind of like draw string the bottom closed after you, after you're done. So there, uh, I will try, I did, I, I don't think I put a link to the tutorial in my Ravelry. I have to do that, but, uh, oh, I'm also on Ravelry. I don't use it a whole bunch because I know there's a lot of Ravelry issues, but if you use Ravelry, I am the cat lady on Ravelry and I have all my projects on Ravelry. So and I will try to find a link to the tutorial I specifically use. But if you just Google Addy Express Pumpkins or Addy King Size Pumpkins or whatever, there's a million of them. Um, but this one specifically uses a double layered, which, so you don't see the stuffing, but I got that one. Okay, so this one was probably like 50 rows. This one was like 60 rows. I tried to mix one this a little bigger. Same with this one. This one's like another 60 row. And so this has a little, it's a stick from outside. <laughs> See it close. Uh, I just hot glued it on. I love this yarn. This is yarn from like the 90s, probably. Yeah, 100%. Because I had this yarn when like I used to go over to my grandma's house and I would make like friendship bracelets and braided stuff. This is totally yarn from that. And I used the rest of it up and now I have it memorialized, memorialized in pumpkin form for the rest of my life. Because I don't know, it's special, right? Because it's from my grandma or when I was visiting my grandma. Uh, so, but anyways, I was in the middle of trying to make a pumpkin stack. So I might make a, try to make a smaller one on the actual the small machine. Let's see how small I can get and make a little pumpkin stack. So this one's probably like 60. And this one's probably like 50. So they just I mean they kind of just get. Yeah, I mean yeah, they, somehow they get smaller, <laughs> like because I mean they're all the same width around, just the way the the way you put them together. But but I feel like I need one actually like really small to go on top. And then I've made, I made, of course, as soon as I, I made this one and then Emily's like, oh my gosh, I want one and I want it, I want that one. And I'm like, well, you can't have this one because I really like this one. <laughs> and, it's, and this was the rest of the yarn. So this was probably only like 40 rows because I ran out of yarn. It's like, well, I want a purple one. So we settled on this purple one, but, and then we decided to make a crocheted stem. So instead of doing this stick in there, she 
I crocheted just a little chain and single crocheted up and then made this little tiny stem so that she can set it in our bed and stuff. And then David, of course, well, I think I asked David if I, he wanted one. He said yes, and he wanted the traditional orange pumpkin with a green stem. So I did the little crochet stem. So if I make them for, for uh, children, I will, boy, I put a big stem in that one. If I make them for kids, I will do the little crochet. So those are my pumpkins. I'll probably make more of those because then just they'll be all over the house. The house is gonna be overrun with pumpkins because they're fun. Uh, so the big ticket item, kind of, that was like last minute slash. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this was the week, the piece for the weekend. So I've been planning the wool gathering thing since the summertime, and you know it's September. You figure it's going to be a little bit cooler. And so I had made the, I'd finished the granny square crop top that I showed off last time. And it was like, okay, that's what I'm going to wear. Well, you look at the weather and it's going to be 80 something degrees at the wool gathering. So no, I am not wearing that. So I was on a chat on Saturday and John, uh, Lefty Nerd podcast, Johnny Bodice, he's like, well, just make another one. <laughs> you can whip them out fast. I'm like, no, I'm not making another one. But as I'm sitting there, I started looking through my scrap bin. I'm like, well, maybe I can make another one. And I did a quick Google search on Granny Square Tank Top. So if you don't follow Lefty Nerd Podcast, well, first you should. Secondly, Aquila made a pair of Granny Square pants for her husband, John, and he wore them. So I, I, And she ended up making a pair of shorts for herself. Her daughter had a little tank top crochet that was super cute. And so I, we were all like wearing our crochet stuff. But uh, so I googled granny square tank top. I came up with like a recipe. It was like you, okay, you just you make squares to whatever size you need. You seam them together this way and then do whatever you want. So I came up with this and there were some examples of what people had done. But this was my take on it. So I got the all the squares and then it, it just it's like short. It's very short. So I didn't want to show off my stomach. So I made like excessive fringe which I think turned out great. It's like my favorite part. So I have all the fringe down there and then I added this like lacy chain work in the front because again it was a little bit low cut as well. Uh, I wanted to keep it s somewhat modest, right? And then it crosses, the straps cross in the back. And yeah, I started it out last Saturday and finished it on Thursday and it was uh, ready to go for the past Saturday. So that worked out really well. And this is I, this is just a random skein of Bernat stripes that I had bought to use in my knitting machine and it didn't work. Like the, it just, the machine hated that yarn. So it couldn't, it, I couldn't run it through without it having a bunch of mistakes. So it just sat in my bin of uh, scraps here and uh, it was perfect because I didn't really want to like change colors every row because I, I was looking for something quick. So literally I just had to keep going around. Let's see, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, six rows square and then I did a outline in black for that cost contrast and then slip stitched them all together and actually I thought I was a little worried it was a little little big so it's a little loose which is it's comfortable but after I got the straps in the front it kind of it hold it up held up nice so I'm very happy with it so that'll be a new like little summer top So that lacy section though, there's no way I would have ever been able to do that without being inspired and sort of instructed by uh, this other finished object, which I don't believe I showed. I'm pretty sure I didn't show it. Um, but this is the Boho Goddess crop top or Boho Goddess bralette or top or whatever it's called. But this is by Star Lily Creations, who is also Jennifer Zeri, who is also the designer that did the uh, granny squared crop top that I made. So this was her cute little bralette pattern um, that she has. And I, you know, so I was like, I did, it's not the same. This is not the same at all, but it's just inspired by because I thought that was a cute little way to give some coverage up there. And so yeah, I don't have pictures of me in this yet, but this is like really cute. So it comes around here and then it's got a little tassel in front and then it has like a kind of a corset tied back. So this was fun. And this was just a random, again, I'm like really into like the stash busting and crochet combination. So uh, this, I just grabbed a thing of yarn from my bucket of, I have a bucket of cotton that some of it has labels, some of it doesn't. So just grab something from, it's nice and soft. 
grab something from my bucket of cotton, put that together. I want to figure out a way, I mean, which now I'm, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'm not. I tied this tassel on, but I was thinking of trying to make it removable, so I don't know if I was like going to put like a jump ring through it or something, so that I could throw this in the wash, but maybe I'll just hand wash it. Because this is going to have to be hand washed too, with all that fringe. Because the fringe isn't going to come off, so. But I don't know, it might be easier if I can just make this removable, and then I can hand wash this, or I can machine wash it, hang to dry. So, so, I don't know. Uh, and that is it for my finished objects, which was quite a lot, I'd say. But it's been a month, so I'd say I'm doing pretty good. So works in progress. I have just a couple works in progress right now. Uh, last, I had showed that I was working on a crochet skirt pattern, and originally it was going to be like kind of a solid top and then go into like a pineapple lace bottom. I've scrapped that because I ended up buying a skirt pattern that I really liked with a whole bunch of pineapple lace. So I'm like, okay, well, when I'm ready, I'll just make that one. So this one, I've picked something else. It's going to be like some kind of trellis fan stitch or something. But I found a stitch pattern that I liked. But it's kind of on hold. I just haven't worked on it because I got other projects I'm working on. So we're going to wait on that one a little bit. But it's still there. Uh, so I did cast on a sweater, though, which was a kind of, kind of a... Not a last minute decision. This has been on my make nine list, but it was kind of like, oh, I'm gonna cast this on right now. <laughs> and I did. So, and I really made some good progress and then I kind of stalled getting ready for the trip. So this is going to be the Sock Arms sweater by Stephanie Lotvin, who is Tilly Bean Knits. And I, it's bottom up and I got almost the whole bottom done. So I am about like two inches before you split at the armpit and then you work the front and the back panel. Cause then you work like set in arms, which I'm a little nervous about. Uh, but yeah, so this is working up really well. Hopefully the gauge is right. It seems to be right. It's wool. This is my first time using wool for a sweater because usually all my sweaters and shirts and stuff are all acrylic. So this is my first actual wool sweater and it's Knit Pick Swish in the Loam Heather color. They come in 50 gram balls, which is kind of annoying because I've had to like, you know, keep adding, keep adding another ball, you know, because I don't know why. But so be it. But it's real pretty brown. Uh, I had some shaping, so that's what all those stitch markers are still there for. And then the sleeves, which I don't, I don't have handy, but it's right there. So I'm gonna grab it. The sleeves will be so sock arms is a solid body, and then you have striped sleeves. So my sleeves are gonna be in the Knit Picks Felici in the Rustic Cabin color. So I thought this was just very fall, and it goes with the brown. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to get the sleeves on. And I have two of these, so that should be enough. One for each sleeve. And if you follow me, and you followed me for a while, you know I'm going to try to make the sleeves match exactly, just like I do with socks. So we'll see how that goes. And that's just kind of stashed in my little basket, my little Rhinebeck baby basket. This was a pretend, or a sample tassel I was making. I didn't know if I was going to have enough yarn in the purple. I was thinking, okay, well, I can just make a different colored tassel, but I did have enough in the purple. So that's just my spare tassel. So that is work in progress number one. And then I needed something like mindless to take with me this weekend. I did not want to take my sweater, especially when I'm like not that far from separating and doing all these things. I'm not going to sit around a campfire drinking and work on a sweater because <laughs> that seemed like a really bad idea. So I cast on a market bag, which I've always wanted to make a market bag. I just never have. So this is the color block market bag by Jen Palmer. And again, this is just stash dive. This is handicraft. Handy, Bernat Handicrafter Cotton. Not a huge fan of working with this cotton. It's very stiff, but I have I feel like I've loosened up a little bit in, as I've gone along, so it's not so bad in, in the mesh pattern. But in the single crochet section, it was it was tight and it was tough. So it was getting better. But So the bottom is, and I did not follow the pattern completely because I feel like the bottom needed to be a lot more taller. So uh, I added like probably double the rows that it said. But, you know, you kind of have a flat bottom there. And then it goes up the side. And then it changes color. So I love that. And I love the purple with the cream color. I don't know if you can see the little specks of color in there. There's, like, little bits of pops of colors in there. I don't know what the colorway is. I didn't have it listed in my stash. And it doesn't have a label. And I couldn't find it. So it's, like, almost like confetti in there. And then the purple was called, like, grape juice or something. But I'm just going to work up until I feel comfortable with the mesh size. And then you work a handle and a strap kind of thing. So 
Um, yeah, I still got plenty of, plenty of yarn left. So that was my weekend project, so that was pretty easy to work on. And then I also cast on a blanket that I brought but I didn't touch. Because again, I was just looking for simple projects. So this is a wool, a Hometown USA, just line brand, really bulky yarn and I didn't I haven't gotten very far I was gonna make a seed stitch border so my friend I went over to her house and she had a bunch of these blankets laying around and they were like bulky blankets that just had like colored blocks and random stripes it wasn't like it looked uh just random and it was like they were super cute and they were just lap, lap blankets and she had brought them out to sit outside because it was a little wet so she had, we were sitting on them but um they were really cute. I'm like, oh, I need to make one of these. And I happen to have these colors in my stat. Not the, same, not the same colors, but I happen to have some cream and some like charcoal gray and then the navy blue. So I thought those three colors would look great. And again, I'm working on stash diving, so it was like perfect. I was going to go to the store and buy, <laughs> buy yarn for it because I just I think this is such a cute blanket. It would be perfect. She keeps them in the car. Uh, yeah, she sent me the pattern. It was like a car blanket type thing, but I'm just kind of winging it and she sort of wing, wong it <laughs> too. So so that is my works in progress and I think that's it. I didn't even write that one down. I haven't put that one in Ravelry yet. So I will take a quick break before my camera shuts off on me and then we will talk about the what, the, what we did this weekend. Okay, so now we will jump into weekend antics slash stash because I figure I will kind of take you through the weekend and show you what stash I got because I'm trying to think. I don't think I've got any other stash. So, like prior. I don't, I'm trying not, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying not to buy a bunch of them. I do, I guess I have one stash that I haven't really talked about at all and I kind of forgot, kind of just didn't talk about it, but I ordered a sock knitting machine. Like a circular sock machine, like an actual, like it's an Erlbacher. Cranker makes the sock tubes, so I'm super excited about that, but it's not coming for a while because it's like a huge wait list. A little nervous because it's a whole big learning curve as well, but I have lots of friends that have them that will, I'm sure, help me, so that's why I'm excited. I don't know. I had a color card, but I don't know what I happened to it, but it's going to be galaxy purple, so it's like a sparkly purple. So anyways, back to the weekend. So this weekend was Wool Gathering, which is a small little fiber festival in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Never heard of it. Never been there. All of a sudden, uh, a lefty knitter, Aquila and John, are like, we're going, and then Chevy Rell, Chevis, and her husband were going, and some of their other friends that I just met for the first time this weekend also were going. So I'm like, oh my god, I want to go. And they were going camping, and I like camping, so that was like awesome. So originally I'm like, well, I can get my own camp spot, I can bring my tent, whatever, but then John and Aquila said, no, you can stay in our camper. So it was, which was perfect. It worked out so well. Everyone was super nice, super amazing, and it's only a four-hour drive for me, so I got up on Friday, got the kids off to school, and took off, and so I was there by a little before one o'clock, I think, or 12.30, I can't remember, but early afternoon, so just uh, had a lot of time on Friday to hang out and have fun. So we, when I got there, uh, we kind of set up, but we pretty much uh, just took off and went down to Yellow Springs, the town of Yellow Springs. It's this, like, cute little, like, total hippie town. I mean, and they, they tout it as a hippie town. It's just so cute. They have all these little shops. They have a brewery and restaurants and so much fun. It was so cute. Uh, did I leave other stuff? Uh, let's see, where did I? I think I left my other pile of stuff. I did. Darn it. I am just not good at bringing things. Uh, so I will... I will pause again and I will grab the stuff that I'm looking for. And it was here. It was just in a bag. Uh, this ain't a fancy channel, okay? Just gonna, just gonna put that out there. So we went to downtown Yellow Springs. We went to uh, the first thing we did was we went to a brewery. We got some cool drinks. Uh, of course, I stuck. I stole one of the coasters because I don't know breweries always have the coolest little coasters. Crafting truth to power. Mindfully brewed in Yellow Springs, Ohio. So what did I have? It's called like peach and passion fruit. It was called like Captain Stardust. It was really good. So we enjoyed a beverage and uh, if I'm good I will put some pictures in. Uh, if you follow me on these socials you will see... Oh boy, I kind of dinged up my sticker. Uh, you will see some pictures, but anywho. Uh, we wandered through town. We went through all the stores. I picked up a sticker. So I'm starting a little sticker collection. Uh, a lot of people do. And... 
I want to put them on my knitting machine table. So I have my Higgins Lake sticker from the summer. And then I got this one. And I, if I dig around, I know I have like a Ludington Bay Brewing Company sticker and a Bell's Brewery sticker, even though I haven't been to Bell's. So. But I like Bell's by <laughs> beer, so. Um, so I have that. And then, so we wandered through town and we went to all these little shops. And a lot of these shops had like, so I don't know if it was consignment or it was a bunch of like makers that could bring their stuff in. So it's, it's like when you went into the shop, it's like, okay, this was somebody's stuff, this was somebody else's stuff, and et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know who this woman was who actually made these. I think her name was Diane. Her name was Diane, but I didn't see a business card. So I don't really know. And that's kind of a bad on me. I should have a, should have figured out who it was. But I bought these earrings because I thought they were super cute. So I got these little rainbow wood earrings. Hopefully you can see those. And they're like little rainbow chevrons like on wood and they're like hand painted and like really good. Like how do you paint that small with like, really good. <laughs> so, like actually yeah actually so it's just a solid piece of wood. I don't know if it's and it's just painted on there. So yeah that's really really good. Like those really thin black lines. So really impressed. I got those and then we were walking around some more and one of the people we were with she's like oh you have to come see this because of course I'm the cat lady and I love cats and I don't even know if I can use this I actually used it once yesterday I'm like I don't want to I don't want to dig it up it's so cute but it's a cat like spoon it's like a tea iced tea spoon so it's like made for tall glasses to stir up your iced tea or I usually do a lot of like crystal light powder so I thought it would be perfect for that but now I'm thinking it just needs to sit in my little my little basket over here because he's too cute so I don't know what he's gonna be yet because he's adorable but he's purple and cute and I'm guessing he might I don't know it looks like he might hold on to your glass but I don't know he might just be decoration but that's okay so we wandered through that and then we went to a restaurant I don't remember the name of the restaurant now either so I am a bad vlogger we were just having fun, so, you know, it was, we were living in the moment, right? So, it was like a Mexican restaurant with a brewery, and they were two kind of, two separate. So, you got your drinks, which I didn't get a drink at that point, because I had pretty much just had one, and I was good. So, I just drank water, and then you get your food. But, the, oh, I got, like, a trio of like, chips with, like, queso, guacamole, and salsa. Oh, it's, like, one of my favorite things ever. I love Mexican food. I love chips and dip. I love melty cheese, like queso cheese. Oh, it was so good. So we did that, and that was amazing. And then we walked around some more. I might have, I, yeah, I'm trying to remember if I got my spoon. And that might have been after that, actually, but I don't remember the exact chain of events. But we walked around some more, and then we went to an ice cream place. And I got an ice cream sandwich. It was really good. It was like uh, vanilla, vanilla ice cream with like sprinkles on it. Um, with like this really soft chocolate. It was ice cream sandwich style, but it was like a circle, and it was really good. So I got that, uh, and then we headed back to the campsite, and we just hung out, and we chatted, and we drank, and we ate snacks, and had a lot of fun, and then Aquila gave me a, a whole goodie bag of Maryland treasures, pretty much. So, so this is a, like a lunch tote, so a little insulated lunch tote, and apparently this is the Maryland flag. It's Maryland by Maryland. So, my Maryland lunch tote. And then a little matching uh, beer koozie, drink koozie, cozy koozie, whatever you want to call it. And then, like, Old Bay, all the things, pretty much. So, we have Old Bay seasoning, which I think I have some of this, but it's probably old, so now. <laughs> old Old Bay! Oh, here's some fresh. So, I need to start using this more. Sprinkle on burgers, fries, wings, pasta, popcorn. Okay. Uh, Old Bay hot sauce, which my husband loves hot sauce, so I'll we'll try that. And then we got Fisher's popcorn, which is weirdest, weirdest thing ever, because she they brought a bucket of this too. It's Old Bay seasoned caramel corn, and it was really good. It was so weird. It was just weird. It was just so weird, but, but good. So I will eat that for sure. Old Bay potato chips, which I feel like are going to be really good too. Old Bay Sunflower Seeds, which I like sunflower seeds, so 
those will be fun. And then that was all the old bay stuff. But then we have, oh, I'm really excited to try these. Crab chips, the Chesapeake Bay crab seasoning. Oh, that sounds so good. So the Uts crab chips, totally never had those. Those really good. So we have very limited Uts thing. I don't know what Uts or Uts around here. Like the one thing I always remember, and I ha I don't I haven't looked for in a while, but they have a giant like bucket of cheese puffs. Like the circle cheese doodle things. So I know that they sell those around here. But. And then we got cow tails, which I've seen before. We've had them here, but I feel like I have not seen them in a long time. So it's like a caramel stick. And then, and this is a goat's, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm guessing it's a Baltimore candy. Yeah, Baltimore. And some caramel cream, so I'm all for all the candy, so that's fine. And then Otter Binds cookies, which again, I am here for cookies. And then she sent us home with a couple burger cookies. Burger is the brand, and I, I had one there, it was really good, and the other ones are in the fridge for the kids. Um, so yeah, that was my old day explosion from Aquila and John. <laughs> and then I got some merch from Chevy Rell's podcast, so she got a little another koozie, a little grab your drink sticker that'll go on my table. Put that over here, with that. and then a little pin. I got so many pins, I gotta figure out. I have to make a pin pennant. So Aquila made a pin pennant, and she just made a random shaped pennant to put her pins on, and that looked perfect. That's like a perfect idea, so I need to do that. Got my little pin, and then. So that was all Saturday, Friday, Friday, Friday. That was all Friday. So then we hang out and snacked and drank and stayed up late and whatever and had a good time. So then Saturday, Saturday was the day of the festival. And we got up and we, we didn't take, we didn't rush. It didn't start till 10. I think we maybe roll in around 10.30ish, maybe even 11. But I mean, again, it was, this was not a big festival. It was two kind of big tents with vendors in it. And a couple outside vendors, but it uh, wasn't, wasn't huge or anything. It was no Rhinebeck or nothing. Um, so, and it was at Young's Jersey Dairy, so it was at a dairy farm. But the dairy farm was on the other side of the street, and we were, like, in a field. Like, all the wolf stuff was on the field on the other side. So I didn't even go to the dairy, which it was super busy. I did wear my mask most of the time. Not a lot of people were wearing masks, so, you know, it was like, there were a few moments where I was like, eh, not the most comfortable. But anytime it got, like, a little crowded, I'd put my mask on. I kind of just had it, like, up and down most of the day. Um, Yellow Springs was very mask oriented so that was again this town was like the coolest town ever if I ever had to move to Ohio that would where, be where I want to be they had pride flags they had Black Lives Matter flags everywhere they had like the you know wear mask signs and all the vendor or all the stores wanted you to wear masks I mean, it was just really felt comfortable there especially during a pandemic so that was cool and Dave Chappelle is from there apparently and they were all like super like it's like signs on their windows that said the respect Dave, respect for Dave or something like that. So it was interesting. Uh, so you want to see the yarn, right? So I did not buy that much. I honestly, if I would have went around another loop, I probably would have bought more. But there was nothing like, like, I have a lot of yarn. I don't have a lot of space for yarn. So I'm trying to be good. And I didn't have projects in mind. So I'm really trying. I was there for friends, I was there for fun, you know, not necessarily to buy a bunch of stuff. So I did a loop pretty much all the way around and one of the last booths I came to, because I was gonna do a loop and then come back if I saw something I needed to come back for, which there were a couple things I was like, oh, I might come back for that, but then I forgot what they were, so that didn't help me. But we stumbled on the booth of Fiber Seed, which that name was so familiar, so I know I've heard of Fiber Seed, but I don't, I wasn't hugely familiar with it. But their booth was, they had the Sprout Sock, and it was buy, and all the whole booth was buy two, get the third one half off. So if you bought two of whatever, the third one of cheaper, the lesser value third one was, was half off. And I was with Chevy, Re uh, Chevy Roll, Chevis, <laughs> she has a name. Um, <clears throat> and we were all looking, and the big kicker was these fingering skeins of yarn were 510 yards. And they're only thirty-two dollars, thirty-two fifty, which is like that's a reasonable price for a five hundred and ten 
oh, they had like the cents. It was like 64 cents a yard or something. Like they had like, a, they broken down. It was really interesting. But anyways, they had this whole cool booth, a uh, rack of all these like two-tone colors. So I picked this one because look how amazing it looks. <laughs> it's got this like really bright, deep pink on one end and it goes into this burnt orange amazingness on the other end. And like, oh my gosh. So I got two of those and Sheva's got a different color set, but we pretty much got the same set. We got two of the two-tone colors. Hers was like a mustard color and something else on top. I can't remember if it was like a cream or something. I don't remember. I'd have to look at the pictures. And then, and then we each got whatever the top color was. We got a solid. So it's not, it's, it's close enough. So this was called Poppy, the two-toned one. And then this was called Ginger. So we are going to hopefully do a matching project of sorts. We don't know what yet. Some sort of sweater. Because this is a thousand yards. Five, so a thousand thirty. Totally can make some sort of sweater. Shirt. I guess it's fingering. I don't know if it would be a sweater. But some sort of top with this. And either like the do this on the top and it fades into like the solid type thing. Or yeah. So I'm very excited about that. But yeah, this was like the bargain. Bargain of the day. And then... I had gone around, I'd met met her already, but then I came back. So Laura of Laughing Cat Fibers, she's a relatively newer to the scene. Uh, she's done a lot of virtual shows and this was, I think this was her first actual in-person show. I could be mistaken though, but she was super, super nice. Uh, we got our picture together and she was super sweet and I came back to pick up a skein from her and this was called uh, this is a series of that she has speckles and tails, and this was teal tails. So, and of course she's cat related, so I love it. But look at that! Oh, look how pretty that is. So I got lots of teal, little bright pinks and speckles in there. And she had a shawl sitting there that I think was knit up with this one exactly, called Pincha. Pincha. I think it was Pincha shawl. So, uh, and it's a free pattern, and it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous pattern that's free. It's uh, in one of the eps or issues of Nitty, and I think I'm gonna make that because I was just it was so pretty. But it was got it's got like it's like a shawlette that's got like these big like leaf kind of motifs like petals, and so it's like a long narrow shawlette. So then when you wrap it a couple times, it looks like you have like, these petals kind of around your neck. So super pretty. So I think that's is what this is going to be. So laughing cat fibers. That is her cat. That is the laughing cat she has, so she obviously took this, took that picture from one of her cats, but, so she is a cat lady too. Um, and you can find her as Laughing Cat Fibers on Instagram and Facebook, and her website is shop.laughingcatfibers.xyz. So, I will link that below. And that's it. That's all I got. I only got four skeins of yarn. But I have projects. I have a, so, a some sort of sweater project and a shawl. So they all have pl uh, plans attached to them. Now they didn't necessarily. They sort of did. This one, you know, evolved as we were standing in line. We're like, oh, we got to make something. And then, like, we can make a sweater. And then this one, after I saw, I had already picked this up, but after I saw the shawl sample, I'm like, okay, I'm making that. So... Uh, so then we, we weren't there that long. We were there for maybe... I was getting hungry. Everyone was getting hungry. They had, did have a food truck there, but it was very, like, it was just, like, cheese curds and hot dogs, which I would have totally ate, but we decided we were gonna, we were gonna venture out to a restaurant. So yeah, it was like, by the time we got to a restaurant, it was like two o'clock. So um, we only spent a couple hours there, but it was hot. It was hot, and there was lots of bugs and flying around. Um, but yeah, I mean, we did. I did about a loop and a half, probably. I like looped through all the buildings, went back to Laughing Cat, and then I like kind of wandered through a little bit because I thought I was looking for something else, but I couldn't remember what. I was gonna get fiber, but again, I got so much fiber, and I haven't spun in forever, so didn't need any more fiber. So we're we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. So we went to a restaurant that was called Calypso and it was right outside of Yellow Springs. So it's like you went through all the downtown and then like a mile down the road was this like, it looked like it used to be a fast food restaurant and apparently it had a drive through So, you know, we're like, when we pulled up, like, hmm, this is going to be interesting. But it got really good reviews. 
Oh my god, it was so good. It was like Caribbean Latin food. They had really good drinks, so I got I got two drinks there. One was called Blackberry Painkiller, which was really good, and then the other one was like Butterfly Daiquiri, and they were like it was like super pretty. Like oh, if I, again, if I remember, I'll put pictures in. Um, and they were really good. But the food I got like a lunch special that was the price was great, and then it was empanadas, chicken empanadas, and you got two sides. So I got like corn fried corn fritters and fried plantains. Oh my gosh! And they had these sauces that you could dip with it was like a, a garlic aioli and some kind of vinegar parsley thing but oh, it was so good it was so so good I really want to plan a trip back to Yellow Springs with my husband I want to stay at the really cute bed and breakfast they have in town or it's like a hotel and I want to go back to that restaurant and I want to walk through town and I want to go back so uh, and I actually I wouldn't mind going to the dairy farm and actually seeing the dairy farm <laughs> that's that uh, is going on there because I would I like to get some ice cream from the dairy farm too but I, I just didn't have a chance and it's fine so and that is that and then one last thing of stash I came home with that was so we all kind of brought snacks and like every night when we really didn't have dinner so we had a late lunch both days and so like for dinner we just all came back and like threw a bunch of snacks on a table and we just picked out them all night um, so this is Crack in a Bag, also known as Dot's Homestyle Pretzels. Uh, so Jake and Ray, so Jake is Dog Star Knits, who he dyes yarn. S both of them are like two of the nicest people I've ever met. Like seriously, like super sweet. I really enjoyed talking to them. This is made in North Dakota. They live in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, I believe. So they can get that there, which I googled this this morning though, and I think I can get small bags of this at my Target, my local Target. So I might be in huge trouble, but <laughs> these were so good. Couldn't stop eating them. And at the end of the night on Saturday, we were trying to clean up and divvy up all the stuff that was left over. I'm like, I'm just going to take these and they're like, go for it. <laughs> they are full of MSG. So that's why I like them so much because yeah just like Doritos. Doritos has MSG too and I just can't get enough of those. But these are like buttery amazingness. So. And yeah, my husband loved them already. Emily was like hooked. David didn't like them though. But David's weird. Uh, okay. So that, that is the weekend. That is the weekend in a nutshell. So, oh, so who was there? So it was a lefty knitter, Aquila, and her husband John. Johnny but oh dies. And then Chevy Rell, Chavez, and her husband Dan. And then Jake, Dogstar Knits, and his wife Ray, and we all came from like, so we had Indiana, we had Baltimore, and we had Missouri, and then uh, Leah, who is Gratitude Knits, came and hung out at the campsite a couple times. I think she came on Thursday night, which I wasn't there yet, and then she came back on Saturday night, and she lives about in Dayton area, so she was close. So she hung out, she was super nice, and then we, there was another like fan of Chavez's podcast that came and hung out with us. She was camping in the same, she was like right, right by us. So she came over and hung out. I, I think her name was Natalie. She was super nice. So we just had a really nice time just hanging out. We had a uh, fire, fire pit going every night and the weather was perfect. It was nice and like, cool at night. Uh, sleeping in the camper was great. They just put down their uh, dinette area and it was, it was roomy enough for me. So, and I had my little earplugs and face masks that I do when camping, so I was perfectly fine. Uh, everything just went great. The ride home. <laughs> the ride home. So I'm on the phone with my husband telling him I'm coming home and I was supposed to turn down a certain way and I missed it. So my map completely rerouted me a whole different way home. So instead of like getting right onto I-75, like within like 10 minutes, I drove, I, I was like US 68, like for 60 miles. <laughs> instead. So I got a nice tour of rural small town Ohio and cornfields and farms and all sorts, which was fine. I stopped at the gas station at one point and uh, went to the bathroom right before I'd gotten onto I-75. But by, yeah, by the time I was on I-75, it was like almost halfway home. So I don't know, it was fine. And I didn't honestly didn't lose that much time, but it was just like every time I rolled into a small town, it was like the speed limit went down to 30. I didn't hit a couple stoplights. I'm like, oh my god. So it might have been like a 10 minute time difference, which again, that's not that big a deal. So I got back home at 1.30 and was completely exhausted, just completely wiped out. So I pretty much just showered and lounged around 
for the rest of the day. I'm still tired now, but I'm still not used to waking up at six in the morning. So with uh, middle school, so. Uh, all right, so I will. I once. This is gonna be a long one. This is gonna be way too long. I'm sorry. I will take a short break and we will talk about shop news super quick. Okay, in shop news, it's been a while. So I did a terrible Instagram live that totally turned into a nightmare last week to try to do a business update and it flopped and I ended up posting it as a IGTV because I had just like spliced two videos together so I might as well have just sat down and did a podcast at that point. But if you didn't see that disaster, I don't blame you, uh, I will talk to you about what's new in the shop. So I have launched a whole new uh, line, I guess I'm calling it like pure color. I don't even know what I'm calling it. I'm a terrible business person, but it's all like just solid colors, gradients. So each color has its own uh, own gradient that you can order of an individual skein in a different shade. So here is an example. So this is the green set, which is the grass. So it starts, you have lightest grass, light grass, grass, dark grass, darkest grass. So that's how they're labeled in each color. So each color has a name. So this is the grass gradient, which you can order the gradient as well. So you can order the gradient die to order in these mini skeins. Currently, I only have them available on Perfect Sock, which is an 80-20 Merino Nylon. However, if you are interested in something like a BFL sock, which is the 80-20 Blue Lace Luster Nylon, or if you want a, um, the Possibly Soft Merino, so the 17 Micron Merino, totally can get those. I can get, I can pretty much get any base. I don't know DK yet, so that's a, I get my DK from a different supplier. But the BFL, the Merino that I already have, and then the 17 Micron, I can get into minis. So if you have a request, let me know. But this is on the perfect side. And these are available die to order. And I have, so I have green, I have sun, sun yellow. Um, the sun one is a little bit, so these, the la like, the, the sun and the dark sun, like if I really look, I can tell the difference. I can. And even like, like the light, light sun and the sun is almost a little close. Like those three of them are so close, but I feel like if you, if I accidentally mixed them together, I could still figure them out. So I feel like this one's a, I need to maybe do another experiment with yellow, but I still like this yellow set. And I actually, I have a, I have a different yellow gradient set here. That it's the same thing. So it just must be something to do with yellow, but like this was a sheep dreamery fine tint and shade yellow set and like yeah they might be in the wrong order I think it's in the right order but it's really hard to tell the difference between these yellows so but it, it is it's like you it's much easier to see in person than it is what so, so yeah that was the issue with the yellows but this is sun yellow and this is one of my favorites denim which it looks like it so looks like denim to me it looks like the shades of different jeans so this is the, the denim blue. So we have like our, so again, we have lightest denim, light denim, denim, dark denim, darkest denim. So it totally looks like a dark wash versus like your light wash jeans. And then we have our coal. So the coal gradient, which is like this darkest black and then this kind of a dark gray at one end. I, all the pictures are on the website, so I mean, I know I'm getting a little glare here, so I hold them off to the side like that, you can kind of see. And then this is the cherry. Yes, this is cherry. So we have the darkest cherry to the lightest cherry. And then, oh, I love purple. Purple has definitely got, got, got my heart. So we have the eggplant. So we have darkest eggplant to lightest eggplant. And we have harvest, which I really like this one too. So we have the light, light to dark harvest orange. I really like this dark orange. It's like almost like an orangey red. And we have the cerise, which I've learned is cherry in French, but it's obviously not the same as the cherry, but I, I googled the like pink colors 
and it, the picture of this that looked like this color had said cerise and I'm like okay so that was my the thought process but I really like this one too so we have cerise which is a very like pink it's a dark pink that's more of like a raspberry well maybe I think you would maybe call that a raspberry and that is all the gradients so but like I said you can get full skeins of every color that is in these sets so if you want to put together like a, which I'm meaning to do, I need to coordinate a bunch of like, so the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along is coming out and you need five like kind of tonals. He said, he, he mentioned nothing like highly variegated. You could obviously use something like speckles, but nothing like real busy. So like th these would be perfect. So if you found five colors and like even if you, if you took like all the darkest colors of these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different color ways here. So if you took five of those and put them together, all the darkest or all the lightest or all the mediums, or of course mix, mix and match. If you, I don't even know, would it work if you did like one, one color in all the shades? Maybe, I don't know if they're contrasty enough, probably not, but you can mix the darks and lights. So those would be perfect for your uh, make along, mystery knit along, if you're doing that, which I might do, I haven't decided yet. It's sign ups like soon, in a couple weeks, cause it's almost October, but. Uh, and then in addition in the shop is I have two two braids of 21.5 micron merino superwash and so it's softer than your traditional spinning fiber and so if you I, I tout my 17 micron merino so the smaller the number the softer the, the feel is so 21.5 is still really good I think that's what it is so this is moss mossy moss mossy should have wrote this down one of a kind this was like a die dump day thing where i just threw in but some leftovers so that's moss mossy <laughs> and this is uh, jeweled <sighs> terrible 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 uh this i think i can recreate i think i wrote this down uh, but I'm, again, I'm kind of experimenting with the fiber dyeing, and I, I do love how these turned out. And one of each, that's it. So when they're gone, they're gone. I do have a, I think I have two more braids to play around with. So and I kind of just toss one every, every now and again when I'm thinking about it. But if it's something that you want to see more of, let me know, and I will uh, gladly get some more. And coming soon, hopefully I'm going to get some fall Halloween colors out there. I was asked if I was doing anything. I don't have anything like specifically planned, but I should, should, I should do something. <laughs> uh, I'm working on Advent stuff, so I just finally finalized my, no, I didn't finalize it really, but I have my starting color list and I need to actually like go through and determine what dye colors I want to use. So, but I have my list started. So I need to get through that and then I will start the dyeing up of those. Uh, and then I have some extra stuff that I need to work on. So this week I'm going to try to hammer out a lot of those details so I can get up and get those going. But at the same time, I want to try to see if I can squeak in a couple Halloween order or Halloween colors or fall colors. So, um, oh, and then I hate when I have to get up, but sometimes I just have to get up. I had a super secret project that I shared, like just kind of a I had shared like a black and white photo of me dyeing something and it was like a super secret project and it was kind of super secret but I was a donor for the Leading Men Fiber Arts knitting retreat. It was knitting at the estate. So if you went to the event you got a little goodie bag with stuff from different vendors. So I obviously couldn't donate anything huge but I thought oh, just the mini skeins. So I dyed up about 80 mini skeins to donate I've kept one for myself and this was and I might make a couple full skeins of this to sell because I really like this color and it turned out really cool and it's kind of Halloween-ish, fall-ish so it might just and this might be one of my colors I make full size but it's called Warped Forest so we have like teals and like foresty greens and then we got some um, berries and browns so Warped Forest and this is on a BFL mini, so I sent a bunch of BFL minis because I had some extras from when I accidentally ordered too many BFL minis because I didn't mean to order BFL. Um, so that worked out. 
and I sent uh, I sent also sent a coupon code. So if anyone's watching that went to the estate, please use your coupon code and look out for full skeins if you're interested in a full skein. And this is a Minecraft reference. So this I had no idea what to name this, and like I was like, oh, do I just need it? name it knitting at the estate? That seemed kind of boring. Boring, and then I think I was gonna name it like. Monticello, Monticello, because that was like the name of the uh, the building, like the, um, the, um, the state building, whatever. I'm like, ah, I still didn't like that. And then David, my son, or either, either Emily or David, one of the two, I think it might have been Emily. She's like, oh, that looks like uh, Minecraft, like the, the forest thing. And I think the, between the two of them, they're like, Warped Forest. I'm like, well, that's a really good name. So I had even already started to write labels. So I like whited out the labels. With the new name on it because it just works out so well and when I looked googled warped forest minecraft it totally did look like that so so that was fun so I should uh, I should make up a little knit sample of that too uh, if you want to know what's going on first to know always first to know the newsletter sign up for my newsletter it's down below it's a MailChimp I said don't send them out I probably don't send them out enough which I guess if you don't like getting newsletters all the time that's good because yeah, I don't send them out that often, but anytime I dye something new or do something different or if I have a sale or whatever, the newsletter subscribers always get a couple days in advance to shop and then yeah, open up and do the Instagram whatever blasts, so keep that in mind. All right, life. Life is so busy. So since August 20th, uh, we haven't done a ton, but Emily got her ears pierced, so I know I talked about that, so we did get her ears pierced. And she loves it, and she got these little stars, and she's super excited, and they're they're doing fine. You're supposed to leave them in. Well, she can change earrings starting like October second, and then she needs to leave earrings in like 100% of the time for like a year, which that makes sense because they'll they will they will close up. Uh, we did middle school walkthrough. She had issues getting her locker open, but overall, you know, had a good time. She started robotics, which has been intense she's uh then we had our first day then we met david's teacher which we already know david's teacher because it's the same teacher that emily had for fourth grade so it's really exciting and then we did the first day of school which the first day was a half day and then it went full days after that so uh, after a couple days she finally got her locker down so that was like the biggest hurdle uh, last week we did curriculum night so i got to actually meet all the teachers and it was interesting for middle school so elementary school curriculum night Usually you just sit in the classroom, teacher tells you what they're going to do, and that's it. Um, this year, actually, they did videos, which I need to watch, though. But I pretty much know what they're doing in elementary school. For middle school, you take the child's schedule, and you go to each class for seven minutes. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> seven minutes. You better go and move on. So I got to at least see her teacher's faces. I know what they look like, sort of, now. <gasps> and briefly go over what they are doing and how to kind of keep track of what your child's doing. So um, cross country is going strong. She has to kind of juggle cross country and robotics. So some, cause they're half the time they're at the same time. So today she is going to cross country right after school and then she's gonna come home and then she's gonna eat and then we're gonna take her to robotics. <laughs> so it's like intense. Um, David's in robotics, but we're struggling a little bit with whether he likes it or not. So. We keep pushing him into this robotics, and he likes coding, and he likes the stuff, but he just, this program specifically, I just don't know if he's really getting into, and this is the third time we're doing it, and he's struggling already a little bit, so we might end up pulling him. We're still kind of flip-flopping, so we'll see how it goes, but, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm distracted, um, but so we're doing that. Uh, I'm tired. I have to get up early in the morning, and I hate it. <laughs> So middle school starts early, so um, me and Emily are waking up at 6.15, and I hate it. So I'm tired, so I'm tired. And then the evenings are busy because of all the activities, so yeah. So here we are, but I'm still crafting, I'm still keeping on good moods, and keep on keeping on, right? So. Thank you all for sitting through that. That was a lot longer than I uh, usually like to do. So if you are new, I usually try to make them a little bit shorter, like 30 to 40 minutes tops. I have a feeling this one's gonna be longer, um, but I had a lot to talk about and it's been a month. So hopefully I will be back. I don't know if weekly is good or not. I still don't know the best schedule for me. Monthly is not, that's too much. 
but maybe every other week is working better. Maybe it just depends on what I have to share and if I have the time. So we'll see what I get done this week and uh, then we can go from there. But now that the kids are gone and I'm home by myself, it's easier to manage the recordings at least. So now I have to go and edit this thing together with the thousands of clips that I've made. <laughs> I usually like to try to do it in one bang, but here we are. So that is all the rambling I will do. Thank you for joining me. Please follow me uh, all over social media. I love to interact with you guys. And if you have any questions, I'll leave them down below. Email me, whatever. Just reach out. Come join the Discord, Discord server and chat. Sign up for my newsletter. Whatever. So I hope you get to craft all the things. Bye. <laughs>